welcome to the Kingdom Project Podcast. I'm your host, Marcus Hall. And this is different than your sun, normal Sunday episode on a uh, sermon, if you will, sermon Sunday or Sunday sermon. <laughs> this is from church today. Um, however, it would be a lot different than the other sermons. Um, you'll, <laughs> you'll be able to see. Uh, week maybe I don't know maybe it's a little weak maybe it was just a little bit more relaxed I didn't take any notes I didn't prepare anything I just wanted to go over a certain section in Romans 5 and show the contrast between Adam and Jesus that Paul lays out there um, from verses 12 and on and just sort of talk about it and make comments on it and try to get some a little bit of conversation, which um, there wasn't there there wasn't much, but that's okay. So that's really what's going on here. So try to take the gospel, um, why we're sinners, and the gospel more than forgiveness, and then go, hey, look, both of those two things that I've talked about, they're sort of here, like in this section that Paul's laying out, and if we can get this. If we can understand this, we're going to understand um, the, not just the gospel, but the full counsel of God a lot more clear. So it's more of an introduction or a primer, if you will, to this section in Romans 5. And we'll, we will be going uh, probably the next two weeks, maybe three, into this section, um, in just that section alone, um, to to tease this out and to get a better understanding of it. So that's um basically why i'm just sort of i'm reading the text and then just talking so (laughs) instead of really preaching okay and just trying to explain this and trying to get people to uh uh, have a little bit of a primer a little bit of understanding of what's going on and uh basically that's uh that's that's it for the intro on that uh check us out on facebook uh, like, share, subscribe, leave a review on um, on the iTunes if you would. That would be appreciated. And don't forget to check out in the description below that you can send and uh, help and get. This is a listener supported podcast. So uh, when you'd like to have some money to host the RSS feed and uh, publish the episodes for another year. And any other money will go towards advertising. And again, thank you for listening. So here we go. Some people just never have heard that part of the gospel. um, That it it is truly more than forgiveness. And being united with Christ. And uh, so there's a a section here in Romans I'm going to go over. But I want to know... uh, from you guys as well, if there is anything that you have questions about so far that we've gone over. So I know you, Dorothea, the last week were like, what? <laughs> Did you have time to compute any of that? Do you have any thoughts, any questions? Not to point you out. <laughs> well, I just, you know, yeah. And, and I... I I deliver stuff at a fast pace. I know sometimes people can't keep up. You got to kind of cram it in there, though, because of the time. That's not, you know, if I were to slow it down and drag it out, it would take us a long time. (laughs) A long time. If I took my 35 minutes and made it 15 minutes, you know, but 15 minutes of information within 30 minutes, it's going to take us a long time to get through stuff. So, all right. So... I, I think this in Romans chapter 5. I'm just going to read this. And then we'll maybe we can converse on it after I say some things. I'll make some comments. But this, this here is going to give somewhat of a summary of what we were talking about. This identification in sin, right, that we are all born into, right, of Adam, in Adam. And then this... This redemption, this forgiveness and reconciliation that comes, that puts us in Christ, that changes this identity from sin to that of Christ, right? It's more than just forgiveness because it gives you a new nature because you become a new creation. So 
Adam, right? A descendant of Adam, descendant of Christ. This is what we deal with, right? Two descendants in the world. That's how I've, I put it. And then I put, you know, identification with sin, identification in righteousness, in Jesus. Death in Adam, life in Jesus. Like, this is the two that are going on, all right? So this is what is Paul puts forth here in Romans 5, starting at 12. And we hit upon it just briefly. But I'm going to read from 12 just to the, the, last, the rest of the, the chapter of 5. Okay, so it's death in Adam, life in Christ. All right, so the, therefore he's just adding on to everything that he's come up to up to this point. And he, where he says why we were still weak, why we were ungodly, why we were still sinners, that God has done this stuff. All right, so therefore... Now he's going to explain the situation that's going on. Just as sin came into the world through one man, okay, this is Adam, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sin. And then there's a dash there. I don't know if you all have that or not, but there's a dash because it's like he stops abruptly there to give a parenthetical other statement. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses. All right. So even though there was no law from Adam to Moses, death still reigned. Okay. People were spiritually <laughs> dead. People experienced physical death as well. But even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam... Who was a type of the one who was to come? All right, so type, remember that. Adam's a type of one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation. Okay? This one trespass brought condemnation. But the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. For if because of one man's trespass death reigned through that one man... Much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, all men, all humanity here, so this one act of righteousness leads to justification in life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. So by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. Now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. <laughs> there's so much <laughs> there's a lot in there it's hard to read too right <laughs> all right so you have this what i've laid out this the adam the taking in uh why is it adam why is it not eve that gets called out here does anybody know we're going to converse a little bit today Adam was created first. Head? Yes, you, you've got it here. There's this head, all right? This federation, I think is what it's called, of headship, all right? Adam is created. Eve's taken from his side. But Adam, all right, is the head of all humanity. He's the representative of all humanity here, all right? So he still sinned. I mean, 
And, and you see his response. The woman you gave me. <laughs> she made me do it. <laughs> right? Just like a man. Right? <laughs> We've been doing it ever since. <laughs> <laughs> but he had received he had received the command from God to not do this, right? She does it. There we go. <laughs> she does it. He, you know, we went over this, but he is still accountable though in that too because he was the the head uh, there um as a husband. But he's also the head, the representative of all humanity, all right? In the first lesson, I said, picture an apple with the seeds in it. What do you have in that apple, you know? Like a whole, like a mini little orchard. And then from that, more trees, more apple trees, more apple trees. But if I mess up that apple or I just take it and I throw it in the trash, no orchard, no apple trees, right? So... It's not a perfect illustration. If there was perfect illustrations, it wouldn't be called an illustration. So, <laughs> so Adam, all right, so we see this. This sin came into the world through one man and death through sin. And so death spread to all men because all sinned. Well, why did all, all sin? Why did death spread? Because all sinned. Right? That phrase all sin means that all sinned in, in this Adam's sin because he represented all who would descend from him, right? He acted as the representative. He made the choice. Therefore, he made the choice for all of us, unfortunately, <laughs> right? Because of that, then death through sin and death spread to all men. Very controversial or debated topic, spiritual death or physical death. What's the consequence? God said, on that day you surely will die. He didn't die, though, did he? He didn't die physically. Something I, I do wrestle with. Because most, most people say it was a physical death. Physical death is not natural for us biblically. It shouldn't have been. It wouldn't have been in God's original plan. However, he's... He makes them, he says, go subdue the earth, multiply, you know, fill the earth. Uh, at some point, we probably would have got overpopulated. You know, I mean, I think it would have been a natural outcome for physical death to have happened, even if the fall hadn't occurred. But death wouldn't have had a sting to it, you know. So I think there's, it's spiritual death here. He, he separated, Adam separated himself from God, and that's why they're hiding in that shame and that guilt. Their eyes were open, they knew they were naked, right? So this death comes through the sin. So you were born the spiritually dead, separated from God, and this death reign from Adam to Moses, all right? Now it said sin is not counted where there is no law, there was no law between Adam and the Mosaic law. Still, people sinned. They did not know, but there, um, unless there had been commanded of something. One thing that had been commanded to Adam was to not disobey, right? And not to eat of that, that, that tree of knowledge of good and evil. Adam broke that law. We're not going to get into the, <laughs> the, from the Adam to Moses, but death reigned. These men were still spiritually dead. There were some who would be counted as, their faith would be counted as righteous, right? All right, so... Then he says, at this, like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. So he's a type. All right. So we're going to we start to see then the free gift versus the one the gift that we the gift, if we, <laughs> the curse that we've been born with, that we've been dealt with because of the head of humanity. All right. The historical figure of Adam that has is the father of all humanity. All right. He starts to parallel Adam and Jesus. Jesus is the anti-type. And you've heard me speak some on types and shadows in the Old Testament. Adam is this type. Jesus comes. He's the anti-type. He, the type is an actual person, a place, or event that is pointing forward to the fulfillment of 
the better version of it, right? Jesus comes, the fulfillment, and then some people will say the second Adam, but here it says the last Adam because I believe last would be more proper because there'll never be a third Adam. It doesn't have to be, right? He's the last. He comes and gets it right. So this free gift is not like the trespass, right? For if many die through one's, one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of of that one man, Jesus Christ abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin, right? Because he said the judgment followed the one trespass and it brought condemnation. So that was the result. This condemnation, all right? You're born with this knowledge of good and evil. You're spiritually dead. You're separated from God, you're not in relationship with Him. So, and we've talked about this: this knowledge of good and evil that we decide what is good and evil based upon our our thoughts, our experience, and our learning, right? And it brings condemnation. Now, I don't want to go too, too off track here, but people talk about people say that we're we're just we were born then with with Adam's guilt that we're guilty. I don't think you know I. I've had more of a problem being like, well, why do I have to deal with what Adam <laughs> did instead of feeling guilty <laughs> about what Adam did? Um, there's a lot of different views here, but um, I, I believe it's just the result as him as head representative. He made the choice that we fall now into this, this category. Not necessarily we don't feel guilty, but at some point we start to sin and we go deeper in that death that we've been born in, and we feel guilt and shame and condemnation. That's a result of being spiritually dead, right? But the free gift brings justification, right? So Jesus comes, and as a result, brings justification to us, to justifies us. Um, so the, the, the depth, then, of God's grace is in Christ that's featured here is that the one trespass of Adam results in that condemnation of, of all humanity. But Christ overcame this whole flood of sin that overwhelmed the whole world so that all who belong to him enjoy being justified. There, like, for, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ, right? Okay. So... Death, death ruled then this, this is why I think it has to be a spiritual death, because if death ruled the human race by virtue of this one sin, Christians now stand as these rulers because of the work of Christ. When it says the, the free gift of righteousness, like reign in life through the one man, Christ. Now, we reign in life, we still are going to die, right, physically. Right now, we know the last enemy to be f defeated is is death. But, you know, I think for me as an individual, then, that, then that's my last enemy to be defeated will be death because of what Christ has done for me. So it won't have sting. It won't have victory over me. Just as Christ w didn't uh, wasn't held by death, we won't be held by death. But it, to be awakened spiritually now and to be justified to be reconciled now puts us in Christ and therefore we are to reign in life now right so death it being this physical thing I don't buy that so much I'm just talking with you guys so <laughs> because Jesus was sinless right he was born of a virgin that way he didn't in inherit the spiritual death. He aged though, right? He was he grew into he grew into a man. If if we were to get back what Adam had taken away in his disobedience, then Christians wouldn't physically die then, right? That's what it seems like to me. <laughs> right? Then we would just continue to rule and reign on earth to subdue it, right? If Jesus, let's just, you know, for a moment say that Jesus hadn't been crucified, would he have succumbed to death? 
would he have just grown old with age <laughs> and died? I, 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 does anybody else think about that stuff? I mean, that's what I deal with <laughs> in my thoughts. <laughs> hmm? What was it, spiritual death or, or physical death that, that sin brought? <laughs> Am I making it more confusing for you guys? Let's just go on. <laughs> all right. So this one trespass of Adam, all right, as the covenantal head or this federal headship, right, of the humanity brought condemnation and guilt to all people. In the same similar way, Christ's one act of righteousness his death, right? Well, his whole life, but the perfect obedience, including his death, and then his, his triumph over death, right? Grants righteousness and life to all who believe in him, right? Now, um, in, that's all who come to faith in him that, that claim him to be God in the flesh, Right? So this is granted. This is given back to us now. Justified, reconciled, born again. New creations. So that one act, see, we see that then? Disobedience from Adam, but then the one act of righteousness from Jesus. Disobedience, condemnation, right, an act of righteousness, justification. Okay? You guys, you guys see it, right? Okay. For as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. But by one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. Again, head of humanity, right? Descendant, we're all descendants. And now how do you become a descendant of Christ? By receiving what he has done, right? Faith and in the grace alone. And now you become that. You're now justified. You're now made righteous. You're new again. That's what I was going last week for. Right, so b people were made sinners, all right, or the with the knowledge of good and evil, because of the one man's disobedience. It shouldn't be too hard to figure out. Of course, we go why, but it's because he was made the head of humanity, the the representative. So. <clears throat> When Adam, as mankind's representative, sinned, God then regarded the whole human race as sinners, right? Uh, so there's this thing called imputing, imputed, then as if God imputed Adam's sin, that knowledge of good and evil went to all men. Just so, just as we 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 looked at last week. That when Paul says we are in union with Christ when he was crucified, when he was buried, and then when he raised the new life, that in that all of humanity was in Jesus when he got crucified, it's as if, too, all of humanity was in Adam when he disobeyed and had this act of disobedience that took place. Therefore, we all come from that. So natural is Adam. We all come from that, that imputation of what he has done. But now through Christ and his act of righteousness, what happens? It's imputed to us what he has done. Therefore, we are justified and made new again, right? Are you guys getting that? Tracking with me, anyone? <laughs> Amen. Is it better when I have notes? <laughs> so, so, Born them with this sinful nature, it's set in this mold, if you will, of what Adam has done. All right, but but God, like God, then in this last part, God gave the law to counteract the sinful human impulse. But in Judaism, there's this proverb that the more Torah, the more life. Right, but Paul points out that the law came in to actually increase the trespass. And they committed not just sins against the, the law then of God's law and their conscience, but even more seriously and willfully did uh, have trespasses as well. But like Adam's first trespass then against a clear spoken command directly from God, 
It's the same thing here. They're surpassing uh, that and sin is increasing, but grace is going to abound even more. Grace abounded even more than their increasing of sins. So, but the, then we, that would go into six though. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? No, by no means. No, 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 no. We don't do that. Okay, but we go back up. So that, in, in 21 of five, so that a sin reigned in death, Grace also might reign through righteousness. And this leads, it says, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So death, all right, spiritually dead, but also physically now dead. You will die. A man is appointed to die. All of us will die. But here is, in this statement here, leading the righteousness leads to eternal life. So this is here, then it does point to what? is going to happen at the end of our life. You either receive, this is eternal life versus death, and death there is a cessation of life. Eternal life versus eternal death. Right? <laughs> Won't go too far in that, but we are not immortal. God alone is immortal. So everything that's going on in the garden and therefore, all the way through in the Old Testament, types and shadows and the law and all these things, all right? Try to tie this together. To <laughs> then Jesus, right? Jesus comes to the anti-type. He reenacts the way. He puts things back the way it's supposed to go. It does these acts of righteousness, acts obediently to the Father, walks in obedience, led by the Spirit. But he is, remember, God in flesh, Okay. And he does all this because no, nobody else could come and do the things that need to be done in order to correct what's been wronged, right? It's not going to work, right? Like I said, forgiveness, I said last week, forgiveness existed before Jesus. But now what he wants to do is not only forgive, but take away the identity problem. Take away the identification with sin, all right? Now, if death reigns spiritually, but also physically, and this is going to grant you in being justified in Christ to make you righteous, but also grant you the gift of eternal life, then it shows that and God alone is the only one that's immortal, then that you're looking at eternal life versus eternal death here. This is what's going on too. And Jesus comes to give a way to man, man to not only be forgiven, but to have their identification changed from that of sin to that of righteousness to him to live eternally in his presence with him instead of the alternative. <laughs> Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? Can, can we converse on that a little bit? I don't, I don't, I know that, like I said, I may put a lot of information out and all that stuff. I don't like people having to walk out the doors, though, not completely understanding what I put forth. That's my fault, probably. <laughs> if I need to be more simplistic, I'll try to do better. But I want you guys to understand the gospel there in that, and in these last, in those three, these three sermons, that it's more than just merely being forgiven. There's way more to it than that. You're being reconciled. You're being redeemed. Your the sin problem is being removed from you. Does it mean you won't sin? John says, he who says I am without sin is a liar. Okay. But you don't have to submit to it. You, have, you are now empowered by the Holy Spirit to say no to the temptation when that comes. You're no longer going to be held in bondage because this loosing that occurs, right? With Jesus, what he does, he comes. He comes in at just the right time. The kingdom of God is at hand and it's loosing us from the bondage in which we are in. He's loosing us from the grip of the knowledge of good and evil, from the identification of sin, and from eternal death. He's loosing that, loosing us from those things to bring us new life in him and forgiveness of sins. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir? Oh. I could tell. Yes. Okay. After Adam and Eve fell, mm -hmm. had they taken of the tree of life? Would they have had eternal life? 
Well, yeah, yeah. I think, I think the tree of life represents eternal life, and God's reaction is, "Let's get them out of here, unless they take of that, <laughs> of that, because it would have preserved them in the state that they were in." So they would not have died. Hmm. So they would not have died. I think it was eternal life, then. I don't know, but I think it would. I think it would have preserved them in the in the state of their, the sin, and that's why he's like, "We got to get them out," because he already says they've become like one of us, knowing knowledge of good and evil. Let's get them out of here, lest they reach of the the tree of life, right? But that that's another reason why I say I don't think we're we were made immortal. That would have showed. That would have. I know it's hypothetical, and we could go down plenty rabbit trails on that. <laughs> but that's why I think they were placed placed in this in this in this cosmic mountain, if you will, this garden of Eden, and they're given everything to them. The only thing is, like, don't eat of that. But they have the choice to eat of the tr- the, the tree of life, but they hadn't. They didn't. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> they should have known better. Right? But they hadn't. I think there just shows, again, you know, free will and like they could have made a choice. They, they, I think God was like, oh, take that. I hope you take that, but he's not going to tell them what to do. I don't know. It's only speculation at that point when you get to that. But um, I, I believe that would be. It represented, I mean, obviously it, it represents good, right? It represents Jesus. Um, and also per, um, preserving now, I believe, too. Whether, whether that would have preserved them for eternity and giving them eternal life and made them immortals physically, I, I don't know, but it seems to be the case because he's like, get them out. So he was on that. Huh? <laughs> was Eden on a mountain? <laughs> uh, was, was Eden on a mountain? I, I think it was. I'm not sure. But the Jew, uh, Hebraic, Hebraic understanding was this was like this cosmic mountain place of God's presence. And this garden was, was set aside there. And everything's like flowing like out of it too. So, yeah, it was a lot of stuff. <laughs> a lot of stuff.